Dutch oven pot roast, Sunday dinner, made simple. Hello, my name is Jersey. Please let's follow along. I like to lightly saute my onions before I sear the meat. I put in about one to two tablespoons of ghee. I like ghee because you can have a higher heat and it won't smoke like butter will. I like to take one large onion, slice it thin. This will be the bottom of the bed for the holes, the meat while it's cooking so it doesn't stick and it gives it some flavor and gives it a little bit of extra juice. So I saute it two to three minutes. I'm not cooking them to their tender. I'm just basically getting the steam and the juices going. I'm gonna put the lid on it and let it saute for a minute or two. After a minute or two, remove the lid Stir them around so they're not sticking to the bottom. And if you need a little bit more ghee, go ahead and add it now. But I don't. One to two tablespoons was more than enough. I'm going to keep stirring them probably for 30 seconds or so. Then I'm going to push all the onions to one side because I'm going to bring in the Angus pot roast and semi-sear each side over medium heat. I don't use high heat to sear. to add all the blood from the wrapper. This is a 2.65 pound chuck roast from Aldi's. Now I'm going to add my silicone handle from Lodge. I like to keep the onions moving so they don't burn and I like to have about one to two minutes browning of the meat on each side before I flip it. It's been about one to two minutes. I'm gonna flip this over, let it steam and sear a little bit more. I'm gonna put the lid on it and then I will proceed to the next step. Right now I still have it on medium heat and I'm gonna let this sit for one to two more minutes. I only flipped the roast once, so each side had one to two minutes. Now I'm gonna take that pile of onions on the side and I'm gonna push them underneath the roast. It gives it a bed. For one, it makes it so it doesn't stick, and two, it gives it that little bit of extra moisture it needs. And if you have been following along, you know there's two things I always put on any type of beef. Liquid smoke is number one, and I'm gonna add one to two tablespoons on top of the meat. And the other is beef bone broth. I really love both of these. They actually add a more flavor to the meat as it's cooking. One to two tablespoons again. I'm gonna put about one tablespoon of minced garlic that was infused with oil. Lay it right on top and just spread it out like butter. I'm going to add one can of diced tomatoes organic. That really gives it the extra juice and flavor and it makes so the top doesn't dry out while it's cooking for hours. Diced fresh tomatoes are even better. I like to add a generous amount of salt and pepper. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of filtered water that we get from our Berkey filter system. And here is one of my favorite spice blends, Grand Masala. I have a whole blog with the recipe. I'll leave the link below, go check that out. Add about a tablespoon, more or less, to your liking. I use this on beef and chicken. It is a great go-to spice. Make it yourself. Place the lid on, put it in a 250 degree oven, and in one hour, I'm gonna come back to make sure there's enough liquid and everything's going as it should before I put it back in the oven and add vegetables. After I place the pan in the oven, I'm going to remove the lodge handle cover. We will be back in one hour to check on the progress. It's been one hour and now it's time to add our raw vegetables. As you see these carrots here, these carrots have been in this Rubbermaid fresh container for almost three months. I agree, they do not look the prettiest. They have hair on them, but those green tops tells you it's a vital carrot. I'm gonna cut the green tops off and put them in a bowl of filtered water. 
checking out the blog, 11 Great Plants to Regrow from Cuttings. You know the carrot tops, the green part, are actually packed with nutrients and loaded with protein. They are bitter, so I like to use them as a garnish. If you follow me, you know I am not a fan of plastic, but I cannot say enough about these Rubbermaid food savers. Strawberries, lemons, any kind of fruit and vegetable I put in there lasts two to three times longer. My lemons last up to six months. Carrots last three months. I rarely have anything go moldy, and I think it's well worth looking into them. And here are the carrot tops in filtered water. Not a lot of water. You don't want the water touching the green. Make sure you change it every few days. I'll be adding more vegetables to this dish, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to regrow plants. I'm going to recycle the carrot peels. Half of them are going to go to the worm bin and the other half are going to go in our compost tumbler. Composting is a very important task that we use in our home. I have a full blog and tutorial on how you can compost yourself. Make sure you check it out. You can make this heavy duty canning rack or cooling rack. I made two versions, one with power tools and one without. I will leave the link above. Check that out. It's a full video tutorial. It has been about one hour and 15 minutes. Now we're going to add the fresh vegetables. I'm going to add my lodge handle back on to the pan. Look at all that wonderful broth or juice. Don't get rid of it. You're going to need it for the vegetables. The vegetables are going to absorb that liquid and it will help keep the vegetables moist while the vegetables keep the meat moist while it continues cooking for a few more hours. And here is the very last sweet potato or yam that I found in the root cellar that we have grown last year. I love to add turnips too, but we didn't have any. I did not have any of the Yukon potatoes gold that I usually buy. And I also like to buy the little potatoes with the skins on. But with these potatoes, I had to peel them because the Idaho, you do not eat the skins. I am placing several potatoes in there. I added four potatoes, one large sweet potato, and several carrots, and about two cups of non-GMO corn that our neighbor grows down the road. We steamed and froze it, and that's what we'll be using. We're adding the frozen corn right to the mixture. The lid has a deep dome, so there's plenty of room. This isn't the self-basting one with the nipples on it, so it's not going to be adding a lot more liquid. It's just going to steam what's already in there. I'm gonna put it back in the 250 degree oven. I'm gonna check it in about one more hour. We are looking for tender vegetables and the beef should be about 145 degrees internal temperature. It has been another hour and 10 minutes. I went back and cut the big vegetables smaller because the meat is tender and I didn't want to keep cooking it just for the vegetables, so I made the vegetables smaller. The vegetables still need time to cook. Back in the oven it goes for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, up to an hour. I will keep going back and checking the tenderness of the vegetables. It has been 45 minutes. Now I'm gonna check the internal temperature of the pot roast. It should be about 145 degrees and I'm gonna let it set a good five to 10 minutes before cutting it. And I'm gonna pull out my pre-made biscuit in a jar and I'm going to make buttermilk biscuits to go with this. That only takes around 13 minutes. So while this is resting, the buttermilk biscuits are gonna go right in a 400 degree oven. Here it is, all finished, our one pot Dutch oven pot roast for a great Sunday meal with leftovers for several days. And our buttermilk biscuits made for two, perfect every time. Be sure to check out my video, Food From Scratch playlist. You're in luck. I did a whole video tutorial on buttermilk, how to make butter. Check that one out. I'll leave the link above. I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed to show you how tender it is. I didn't even use a knife. This falls apart with a fork. So tender, so moist. During the week, we'll have it with coleslaw and sauerkraut. We'll get that good gut health going. And sandwiches with pulled beef and homemade barbecue sauce. Several meals for this. If you haven't done already, 
please hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, all notifications, so you will get notified every time I upload a new video. And thank you for visiting and please share.